Hi everyone, welcome to our day two. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay respect to the elders, past, present and emerging. So thank you for coming to these two great exhibitions. Um, first of all, we have um, this exhibition by Kate Crisco. Um, Kate's been showing with us for quite a while now. I think this must be about the fourth solo exhibition so. in our gallery. Yeah, and then, yeah, let's try on top of that. She's been exhibiting with us at uh, Sydney Contemporary, the Hong Kong Art Central. So um, we had a lot of fun traveling together. And um, yeah, so here we are. I think over the last two years, she's been working on this fantastic work. Um, again, obviously, it's uh, at Kimberley, but she sort of like um, start to develop her, her sort of technique a little bit further in the way she, the medium and so on. And um, to open the exhibition, we have um, Katrina Cashman, um, who's um, from National Art School, previously with the uh, Mossman Art Gallery. And um, Katrina, oh, I suppose there's something in common in that um, Kate used to teach at the National Art School so uh, in fact, there's a lot of people that came up to her and said I was, you know, they were her students. And, and I thought, hey, well, Kate, you're not that old. <laughs> but she, she started very young. She was started very young, you know, so I think she just sort of like her, she went straight into teaching and, um, and, and, and become an artist as well. So um, Katrina is always fantastic when she uh, opened the exhibition. She studied the work really well. She went to visit um, Kate's studio and talk to her, so she's got a very good understanding of the work. So I'd like you all to welcome Katrina Cashman. Thank you, Karen. And thank you so much, Kate, for inviting me to speak here. It's such a, a great thing to do for, um, you know, as part of the Naz family, um, so thank you. And uh, I too would like to acknowledge the country that we're gathered on today, the Kame, um, Kame country, and pay my respects to all elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge Kate's um, co-exhibitor, Oscar Garcia. Um, wonderful to, to see your work here also, Oscar, and Miguel Olmo, who will be speaking after me to open Oscar's show. So I guess, you know, in my line of work, people often ask me, you know, what's the, what, what got you interested in art, or what got you interested in curation? And, you know, of course, there's many, many different formative moments. Uh, over the years, but one that I can share with you is that when I was a very young art student at COFA, um, I had the good fortune to visit Kate's studio. It was Peter Pinson's professional practice class and the group filed into Kate's studio and of course our eyes were just agog. It wasn't, it wasn't so much, it, it was a, a kind of silence went over the group as we, we just sat there in awe and we sat there kind of trying to take it all in. Of course, it was the materiality of her practice that we were all so keenly observed, the thick layers of sumptuous, crusted surfaces, paint on canvas that was so um, strong, it was so full of sand and cement and stone. These artworks seemed to literally stand up on their own, as though they were objects, as though they were sculptural forms. They glistened with silica. They had a crystalline surface that was rough and smooth at the same time and so deep in rich ochre colours that they clearly announced their past lives as the sandy pigments that were dug up from the earth. So the silence in that room is something that stayed with me. We were all instantly transported by the striking visual clout of Kate's work. So just as the images that we see around us today are so evocative of the timelessness of our Gondwana land, of tectonic plates, moving over time, crashing into each other, pushing up rock formations, sediments never seen before by the naked eye. Or they recall seismic events disrupting the Earth's surface, creating gulfs and deep cuts into the Earth's lithosphere. When you view Kate's works, the geological perspective can be a bit disorienting. At some points, it's like an overhead, looking down on the Earth's sandy surface with that macro view. At other points, it's like a slippage. We, we literally slip. Um, our minds slip as though we're situated in the, inside that deep ravine of the Earth's crust, as though we've fallen down a crack in time to the hot mantle below, and that we all just become a microcosm of dust in that ancient, vast universe that she captures in each of the canvases. 
They're tough, they're rugged, and in the images I experienced as a student were for me and my peers at the time of revelation, they've stayed with me ever since. I felt like a very strong visceral connection to those images, Kate. Uh, they're like a visceral line that attaches between you and me. Um, they, they traverse the landscapes, they traverse imagined landscapes, they, they traverse real landscapes that I've experienced, but they're very deeply embedded in my visual memory. And of course, on my own part, I continually see Kate's work wherever I've gone over the last 30 years. They're in collections, in corporations, in private collections, in museums and galleries. There was always an unmistakable briscoe. Standing firm, claiming space, always powerful, always confident in their aesthetic qualities and expression. And of course, it's not surprising given her impressive career. At least, I counted her CV this morning actually, at least 50 solo shows and countless other group shows over those past four decades. For a person so diminutive in stature, Kate has the energy and verve of a handful of artists half her age. And so I guess, Kate, your work became a barometer of sorts for my own visual knowledge, always there, always a benchmark. And in fact, I'm just going to share something, it's not, it's not too personal, but in my honeymoon, some years later, after that first encounter with her work, I attempted and failed to complete the Gibb River Road track over at WA. We had this amazingly expensive four-wheel drive camper van, but an extended wet season kept us, uh, kept us on the beach of them. We were spending far too much time with an old bloke in the caravan park of Fitzroy Crossing. I remember thinking, looking at what I could see from the road, thinking about your work, Kate, and thinking, this is what Kate paints. And that one of the things I've admired about your work for so many years is that distinctive painterly language that you've developed. It's unmistakably yours. It's your own lexicon. And you chronicle your passions in a mode I would call a form of sensory abstraction. Your lines track and trace the surfaces of your work like a sense of equature in a spatial dispersion of forms. Your, you know, your fascination with the Australian landscape after arriving here from Britain was with, with the rawness of the landscape and rather than you know, seeking to capture a view, your pictorial approach deepened and evolved over time to a richer relationship and a sensibility and understanding of your environments that was a, a deep consciousness of the inextricable indigenous spiritual connection to land and spirit of place. And we can see that sensibility here today, can't we? Whether it's capturing the gorges or untamed coast of the Kimberley WA or the beautiful literal zone of the rock cliffs at Depot Beach on the south coast. Again, silence is really what's needed to fully grasp the intensity of these works. So um, it's sobering to understand if all of humanity is wiped out tomorrow it's estimated that the natural world would take at least five million years to recover from the epoch of the Anthropocene. That's the age that we're living in now, the period of geological time where we know um, our environment is being transformed to crisis levels. Of course, global warming is speeding up erosion. The changes in climate has been linked to more and more frequent storm and, and you know, extreme weather events. Storm surges following hurricanes and of course, kilometres and kilometres of coastline and habitat that's being eroded. Now, more than ever before, it's time for imagination, ambition and creativity to lead the debate. And Kate's work brings us all closer to that responsibility that we share. So I, get, I think the beauty of your work, Kate, and is that we witness that strong message that you elicit for us to care for the earth at our peril. So now that's all, all that's left for me to say is really to thank you, Kate, for your artistry, for inspiring us over all of us over so many years, and for transporting us to places that we may or may not have had the privilege to visit directly. Um, the strength of your work is that it reminds us of the fragility of the times we're living in. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Peter. We've got um, Kate to say a few words. Thank you, Katrina. Katrina's explained everything perfectly. And um, it really is just this thing, and it's been called this, my series of works before, exhibitions before, have been called Geologica. 
which is made up word when you're targeting a system can't spell it that way. So, so but um, I've been exploring rocks for a long, long time. I've rocks in my head, rocks everywhere. And it's it's the the basis of the earth is what we stand on and it's very, very important now to look after it. And what I saw when the last time we went in March, back down to Death Row Beach, was a, an area which I've been looking at for probably 20 years had suddenly changed. The erosion was massive, and it meant that the surfaces of this little uh, rock face, cliff face that I look at, it was really, really eroded, completely, completely changed. Still beautiful, but only half there, only half of the mass of this little cliff face is there anymore. So it does point to the fact that, you know, something is happening and it's not very nice and we need to stop it. And uh, <clears throat> my little joke is the little black one at the end. We went to Catherine Hill Bay where when you walk along the beach, out of the cliff face is coming lumps of coal. So that's a Catherine Hill Bay painting, and I call it Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Katrina. And yeah. Please go. I think you should also have a look at those photo images that Kate took of um, various places in Kimberley so we can see her inspiration for all these works that she's showing. Um, so if you're interested in any of uh, Kate's beautiful work, you should come and see me. Thank you. We're going we're gonna to take a few minutes break and then we're going to have um, the second solo exhibition opening on the other side. Thanks.